By the middle of the 17th century, the Puritans had successfully colonized the wilds of New England. They worked the land, drove the Indians from the forests, and frequently slaughtered them. All in the name of God and fear of his almighty wrath. This is the story of the Higgins family, seven years now in Massachusetts. Anne Higgins, still mourning the loss of one daughter to the wilderness. John Higgins, a prosperous merchant in England prior to his conversion to Puritanism. and their beloved only remaining child, Charity. We'll be late for service. Where's Charity? Why? I thought with you. Charity? Charity? Abraham's readiness to sacrifice his son, Isaac. This is what God required. Not only of Abraham, but of all believers. Whosoever will be my disciple, saith Christ, must forsake father and mother, wife and children, houses and lands, that they may be well prepared so to deny their selfish affections and desires, I say you must restrain your children. Restrain your children from bad company. For a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You're a true believer, Master Endicott. There is always time for God. And for his wrath. My people did this. They've destroyed everything. I'm alone too. I will not tell of your presence. Mega, shout to the sun.
home. Her daughter's place is beside her mother. She is still young, Master Endicott. Young, Goody Higgins. Eighteen and no longer a child. The ways of this community are writ plain. We must all live by rules and discipline or suffer the consequences. I've read the word as well as you, Eben. Perhaps not loud enough. That's for me to judge. No, that is for God to judge. And he will, John. Mark me, he will. The hogs be ready for salting, Goody Higgins. Oh. Right away, Goody Adams, right away. Go now, Anne. We must have no idle hands. John, Charity is of the age to offer herself into fellowship. She has not done so. She says that she has not been called by God yet for her salvation. But she's past the age of testing time, John. For here in one unspoiled corner of the world, can we not declare a truce upon doubts? She is a questioning girl. We cannot clear a wilderness while we bicker over things theological. If we are to build a new Zion, we must believe in orthodoxy. I will talk with her. It is best to keep a due distance between ourselves and our children. When we take too much pleasure in any creature, when we exceedingly delight ourselves in children or in wives, it much benumbs and dims the light of the spirit. I will remember that. see such good lumber? Nope. And keep calling for it up Boston way. I can't cut it fast enough. You've done well, Eban. God's way of showing his pleasure, is it not? So we are taught. Good maple and pine up there. I mean to have it once we've driven the heathen out. much talk about charity. I know. She needs a strong hand. She's much changed, Anne. She bears scars. We must remember she spent two years among the savages. It would not be easy to forget. Our men risked their lives to barter back your girl. Now she runs wild. She has no respect, no gratitude. There is gratitude in her heart. I know this. And why is she not here? Her place is with us. A man will not work, neither should he eat. Hmm. There is much danger in idleness, Anne. It leads to sin. And if there be a sinner among us, it is best he should be expelled. Let him join the other heathen in the wilderness. I've seen such marks before. You find it so easy to dishonor my house? I meant no harm, Father. You I consort was... with savages rather than listening to Scripture, and you meant no harm? Is it not 
my duty to do good, to show mercy. We have taken their land and... Genesis, chapter 1, verse 28. Read. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Mark you girls, subdue it. Go on. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. By God's first grant, he tells us that men are to subdue the earth. When Abraham came into the land of Canaan, he made use of the vacant land, as did Isaac and Joseph, and as we do here. Did not God make all mankind? How then can men act justly to some and cruelly to others? Girl, it wearies a sober mind to pursue such windy fancies. Who dare grow weary of our conscience? Now listen to me carefully. It was such thoughts that banished Roger Williams and Mistress Anne Hutchinson. And they shall all their lives remain strangers among men, left to dream in the wilderness. Do you wish such a fate? Does not God's light shine on all mankind, no matter whether there they be... There is new soap, cool, waiting to be cut. We will continue this conversation when work is done.
It's truly a wonder how in ten years so few people have tamed the wilderness. By God's grace. By God's grace, your grandsons and their grandsons will sow these same things. She does not bring peace to this community. She spits in the eye of authority. That is a danger. Time, John. Time. Time is a strange luxury in the wilderness. We're here to build, not to question. Those who descend... No, John. Don't say it. What shall we do? Return to England? To the land your father left you? This is our home now, John. Not England. If we stay and she does not change, they will outlaw her. Could you bear to lose her? I think my heart would break. And do you sometimes wonder why you must learn your letters, hmm? It's a simple thing. We must learn to read the scriptures. For without knowledge of the word of God, salvation is impossible. All of us are born in ignorance without the fear of God. This lays us open to Satan. Holds us under the power of sin. And the punishment of sin shall be terrible. You have your slates. Let the older children see to the letters of the younger. Master Endicott. You must call a meeting of the saints tonight. Must, Master Endicott. This matter must be heard before the whole congregation. Concerning? The worship by charity Higgins of idolatrous gods. You have proof? I saw it with my own eyes. I'll ring the bell tonight. speak softly and I would you do the same you have been stealing grain and feeding them why charity the truth of it think of our love for you child tell the truth of it I obeyed my conscience. And defied authority. Conscience is my authority. It's the thing which gives me liberty. Oh, child. This congregation has ruled before in such matters. They would have no right to send me away for what I think. They have the right. It is the law. Whose law? This community has been formed by the free consent of its members. Why should they not exclude those with dangerous thoughts? Can you not see? It is this very single-mindedness of purpose which permits us to conquer the wilderness. We live for God. We build for God. We die for God. That is what we have chosen. Those who think otherwise, those like Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson, they've been forced into the mountains. Did not God cross the mountains too? Charity Higgins, you have given precious corn to the barbarian. Huh? And God have mercy, have worshipped at his heathen drawing. What say you to the charge? She is but a child. No, mother, I'm not a child.
what charge is there to answer? Would I fed a man? A savage! Are we less savage who strip him of his lands, drive him away, kill him with strange diseases? That is the Lord's way to cleanse this heathen land, to shower sickness upon those who will not repent. Blasphemer! The charge is most serious that you shared in the worship of strange idols. When I was captured, this man became my friend. He is old and wise and sees God in many things. He showed me how the world began. A good book shows the beginning. This drawing in the sand was a, a way to share his truth. A truth. He drew a turtle lying in the great sea that covered the earth before time began. Then the turtle raised its back. Its shell grew cracked and dry. And from the crack there came forth a tree. And from the tree there sprouted the first man and woman. This is called the Song of the Turtle. And it reminds us that we must share the earth. Must live in it as brother to brother. It's a beautiful song. These are the devil's words. Tide of the dark! Silence! This is a house of prayer. The Indian's way may not be our way, but is he less godly for that? If the devil had free option, he would ask nothing else but liberty to enfranchise all false religions. The power of all religion and of all ordinances is their purity. We must stand fast with one spirit, one mind, and permit no heresy. Amen. Charity Higgins, you must have time to ponder the error of your ways. Master Higgins, take her to the stocks. We left England, George, with the hope that ordinary men could bring heaven closer to earth. 
Did we dare too much? We dared to seek the truth. Whose truth? <laughs> will not stop here. Seven years of sweat, bone, and muscle. One day, month, year. One day there will be another trial. Seven years of ripping rocks from this land to make the earth clean. another child. Could you? Like the Higginses, other dissenters would find their promised land not in the orthodoxy of Puritanism, but in the freedom and space of the American wilderness. By the end of the 17th century, Puritanism had lost its unquestioned authority. Beyond the confines of New England, in the vastness that was America, differing religions would take root. From one idea of God would come many. From intolerance, a nation of religious freedom was born and on it, perhaps forever, the stamp of its stern Puritan heritage. Mm -hmm.